Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Logic X as a sound module in Reaper. Now you're probably wondering, as a fan of Reaper, why do I want to use Logic X? And to be honest, I really prefer Reaper. But one of the best things about Logic is it comes with 40 gigabytes of pretty good sounds. And when you consider the price point, it's not a bad idea to use it for the sounds. But for me personally, I don't really want to use it as a DAW. But as you'll see in this video, we can use it as a sound module. We can record our MIDI and our audio all in Reaper, but use the sounds from Logic X. Let me show you. Now, one thing you do need to install is a program that lets you share audio between applications. I chose to use Soundflower, but you do need to install that if you want to use audio from both applications. So install that first. The next thing we want to do is open Logic. Don't open Reaper just yet, as we're going to make some changes that require Reaper being restarted. So it's better to start off with it not open. Let's create some sounds that we want to use in Reaper. So let's start with drums. We'll choose the electronic drum kit, drum machine, and go down here to modern machines. That changes the sound here to that preset. And if we play our keyboard, we hear that sound as it's automatically routed to whatever track is in record. So let's choose a few more sounds. Double click down here. Let's choose a piano. Choose piano here. We'll choose this one. And let's hear this sound. Now let's choose one more sound. Let's choose a synth. Make a new track. Go to synths. We'll choose bass. And choose big saw bass. Let's hear that one. So let's say we wanted to use those three sounds in Reaper. So now we're going to go to Utilities on our Mac and choose Audio MIDI Setup. Here's our MIDI setup. And right over here, we have the IAC driver. We're going to use this to route MIDI back and forth from Reaper to Logic. Now this is grayed out. Just double click it and turn it on. Now right down over here, make sure at least one bus is turned on. And we can rename it if we want. Let's name it Reaper to Logic X. Just so we'll recognize it a bit later. Close it. And now we want to go to a MIDI environment. Go to the Window menu and choose Open MIDI Environment. And that opens this up. Then we'll go over here to New and choose Physical Input, which opens up this. And we can see right over here, IAC Driver, Reaper. This is the option we want to use to route our MIDI to our individual sounds. Now, right now, it's going to our sequencer. And we can see that if we go to New and choose Sequencer Input which shows up right here. This is what routes all this stuff to our tracks, which is why we hear them when we play our keyboard. So if we turn this off right here and hit our keyboard, we don't hear it anymore because it's disconnected, which is fine because we want to keep these tracks out of record and still hear them. So now we want to route the IAC driver directly to the tracks. So let's grab one of the tracks here, our kick, and our piano, and our synth. And let's move these other ones out of the way. Now when you're dealing with drums in Logic, we just need to choose one drum track. That's why I chose the kick. We could have chose the snare. 
or any other ones. So now if we route all this to our kick and play our keyboard, we hear our drums because it's directly plugged in. But right now, this is the sum of everything, which is the ISC driver and my MIDI keyboard. And we don't want that. Let's put this back. We just want to use the port for the IAC driver, not for the keyboard, which in this case is the second one right here. So if I grab this, drop it here, now that driver is going to the drums. So if I play my keyboard, I don't hear it because we have to route it from Reaper. So now it's open Reaper. And we'll go to our preferences, go to our MIDI devices, and right down here, we see that driver, Reaper to Logic, under our MIDI outputs, select it, right click it, and enable the output. Hit OK. And now, if we make a new track, set our input for MIDI and my keyboard, make sure I'm getting signal, go to the routing. On the MIDI hardware output, choose that driver. So now, if I play my keyboard, we hear our drums, but the audio is coming from Logic. But we'll fix that in a bit. But first, let's separate our modules into different MIDI channels. Because right now, we're hearing the drums, we could switch it. To hear the piano, or the synth, but we want to use all of them at the same time. So we're going to go over here to New and create a Channel Splitter. Then we'll move this to our splitter, and then we can route this to each of our sounds. The first one is Sum, which is all of them. But the next one is channel one. So if we choose this, we should still hear our drums. And we do. Let's go back to Reaper. And let's change this to channel one. So we still should hear the drums. But if we move this to channel two, we don't hear it. Because nothing is routed to channel two yet. Let's put this back to channel one. Let's name this track Drums. Let's duplicate it. And change the routing on this one to channel two. And we'll name it Piano. Let's go back to Logic, take output two, and drag that to our piano. Go back to Reaper, play the keyboard, and we just hear the piano. We'll make one more track, duplicate it, name this synth, change the routing to channel three, then grab the third one and drop it here on our synth. Now the sounds are separated by MIDI channel. Our drums, our piano, and our synth. So now what we have to do is change the audio output. Because right now, we're hearing the audio through Logic. We want to send it back to Reaper. And now we're going to change the audio interface in Logic. Go to Preferences, choose Audio, and change it from our default to Soundflower, the application we installed before. And choose the 64 channel one right here. Apply it. So now let's go to our mixer right over here and change the outputs of our tracks. To see which channels are going where, 
let's put our drums in record and see which channels are moving. Just this one right here. So we'll right click for the output and change it to three and four. This is gonna route three and four to Reaper. Now let's do the same thing for the other sounds. We'll go to piano, check the outputs. It uses this one and these two reverbs. So we'll select them, right click, and change this output to five and six. Now let's do the same thing with the synth. That uses this one and these two. Change their outputs to seven and eight. And then right now, we shouldn't hear anything. Because it's all being routed to separate outputs. Now let's go back to Reaper and let's create those outputs as inputs. Let's take this track out of record. So let's make three new tracks. But instead of having to name them, Let's just duplicate these three. Now these three tracks are gonna be used for audio. So let's select them all, click over here, and choose Assign Inputs Sequentially. We'll go to Stereo, we'll start with Input 3, and then it puts our inputs right in order. Input 3 and 4, Input 5 and 6, Input 7 and 8. Perfect. Now we can put these three tracks in input, then go over here and disable record for input monitoring only. So now these three tracks are just live inputs. They're not going to go into record. So now if we go to our drums and play them, it's triggered from here, going over to here, and coming back on this track. The same thing with our piano. It's coming in here. And our synth. It's being recorded here and coming through here. So right now, Logic is being used as a sound module. We don't have to worry about the tempo or MIDI time code or locking anything up. All the sounds chosen right here are being triggered by Reaper and play back through Reaper. So we can record them here. Record some piano. And our synth. And just like that, we have three parts. And we're done, and we're happy with this. Take these three tracks, set them back to record normally, and record the parts. And now it's audio. on separate tracks, where we could process them completely independently and differently. So I know this seems complicated, but it's actually pretty easy once you get used to it. And we can set up templates in Logic and in Reaper as well, making this process even easier. So anyway, that's using Logic X as a sound module in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.